Hello, my name is Matan, and in this video, we'll go over the initial parameter tuning. We'll be using our XY demo station, this time using the linear brushless motor. This linear brushless motor is equipped with an incremental ABZ encoder, without Hall sensors. So we'll go over determining the commutation offset, tuning the current loop parameters, etc. First, I'll change to B-axis, because that's where the linear brushless motor is connected. I've already defined the appropriate configuration for B-axis in the Configuration tab. Now, the first step is to find the commutation offset. We'll go to the Tune tab and click on Phase. We call the commutation offset finding process of the motor auto-phasing, because it automatically finds the phase between the encoder reading and the motor's electrical angle. There are many methods and options to choose here. For example, the auto-phase process can be configured to start automatically on power on. I'll be making a separate video on this feature that dives into the details. But in this video, I'll just be focusing on the basics. I'll be using the first mode, jump to zero. The two basic parameters you can tune to fit your needs are the step voltage and the auto-phasing step accuracy. If the auto-phase process wasn't successful, you can try raising the step voltage or raising the allowed step accuracy. Let's click on perform auto-phasing. We can see that the motor is jumping in increments of 30 electrical degrees. And we finished successfully. Finding the commutation offset is needed only once when the drive is powering up, or in case of feedback loss. For example, if an encoder cable disconnected. Our next step is to tune the current loop. We'll go to the Tune tab and click on Current. Okay, if we're not sure what our motor resistance and inductance are, we can measure them here. Now, according to the motor's parameters, we can automatically calculate the current loop PI control parameters to get an initial estimate. To test our current loop, we'll click on Apply Current command. We can fine-tune our parameters until we're satisfied. Typically, we want an overshoot of less than 10% and a rise time of around 1 millisecond. I'll lower the integral component a bit. Okay, that's good enough for me. Click on Disable, and let's continue. We can save our parameters to the flash by pressing Alt-S. Now, we'll go to the PIV tab and tune our position and velocity control parameters. Here, we'll tune our PIV loop while looking at the system's step response. We'll see how to get an initial estimate later on with our auto-tune feature. Here's a basic diagram of the PIV loop. The PIV loop is essentially identical to the PID loop with some exceptions we won't get into. Okay, let's click on Apply Position command, and we can see on the right-hand side the system's step response. In this case, I want the rise time to be a bit better, so let's try raising the PI gain. Click Enter, and we can see the rise time is a bit better. Let's try raising it a bit more. Enter. Great. That's good enough for now. Click on Disable command. You can click on the Use PID Tuning if you're more comfortable tuning using the PID scheme. Now we'll go to the Identify tab. I'll make a separate video on this as well, detailing all the possible options. For now, we'll use the most basic option for identification, the Quick method, which uses white noise. Here we determine the current to use, the frequency range, and the maximal allowed motion and open loop errors. Next, we click on Begin Identification. Here's our result. To make sure we got a good result, I can append a new result using a higher current and see if I get the same graphs. So I'll raise the current to use, click on Append, and run again. We can see the identifications are quite different, so let's try repeating the process, raising the current to use, and running again. Good. Now we see the results are very similar. 
Now that we're happy with our identification, I'll run it again to get a new result file to clear out any unwanted identifications. Now, we can go to Auto-Tune to get an initial estimate for our PIV control parameters, like I mentioned earlier. Click on Go to Auto-Tune. Here, we also have many options, which I'll detail in a separate video. For now, we'll just be using the default values. Let's click on Run Auto-Tune. We can now click on the Control tab to see our control parameters. And if we're happy with them, we can click on Write to Controller. Next, we can return to the PIV tab and see the newly found control parameters are updated. We can click on Apply Position Command to see how good they are and tune accordingly. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.